Hello everyone, and this is my review for Monday Night Raw on November 12, 2012. Um, uh, go, basically, to go off and uh, starting off everything, uh, I felt like even though this show, this Monday Night Raw was weak in the terms of its match quality, it did do at least a decent enough job of setting up uh, all the matches for the pay-per-view to the point that you, you at least get what's going on and, and of course, uh, have at least some back kind of story to every uh, match that could be on the card in some way, shape, or form. Um, you had the, you had a very good emphasis right at the beginning about the fi uh, the five on five uh, tag match with uh, with uh, Team Ziggler versus Team Foley. Now it's Team Ziggler because you got rid of CM Punk and everything in that aspect, and now it's Team Foley, Team Ziggler. Uh, obviously, Ziggler versus Randy Orton right at the right from the get go. Uh, very good match. Uh, eventually, having Alberto Del Rio come out and attempt to interfere, he, uh, Orton still picks up the win in there. But ev uh, eventually, leading into the uh, the tag match between Ziggler and uh, Del Rio versus Kofi Kingston and uh, Randy Orton, where uh, the tides tur uh, the tides turn and Ziggler and Del Rio come out on top. So you get a little bit of emphasis there onto the into the the five on five match and a little flip flop in between uh, momentum wise between the two teams. So that was definitely a uh, a very good. Uh, way of starting off the show and then of course that that emphasis got put into a little bit more when you had Kane teaming up with the new member of the team which is the Miz now per the uh, fan vote regardless of whether or not that fan vote was fixed or true at that point in time uh, the Miz will be part of the Team Foley team going into the Survivor Series uh, going into the Survivor Series match they had their match with the Team Road Scholars and, uh, uh, you know, it, basically that match just served the purpose of getting Miz on the team and putting him into the emphasis of being on Foley's team versus being on Ziggler's team now. So that was definitely a good way of doing it. Uh, this one was an extremely quick match. They had a number one contenders match for uh, the Divas Championship. Caitlin won it. It was probably not, the match itself was no more than a minute long. They basically just set it set it up so um, Caitlin and Eve could potentially finish off this uh, storyline that they've been having since uh, basically September at at the Sunday's pay per view. So you know what their backstory is about the attack and everything like that going into their uh, going into their match. Uh, you still don't have a who done it type deal. Maybe something will be revealed at the pay per view or uh, the next night of Raw, but you'll have that match at the pay per view as well. M might be an okay Divas match. We'll see what actually happens there. Um, uh, pretty good emphasis on the Big Show and Sheamus feud. Uh, again, sh uh, again, uh, Big Show goes up against William Regal, th this time in a one on one situation versus the tag situation. Big Show comes out on top. It looks like he's about to knock out, uh, and looks like he's going to continue the beating and knock out William Regal with the, the KO punch. Sheamus makes the save there. And then later in the night, after Sheamus beats, the, uh, beats uh, David Otunga, he, the, um, Big Show basically gets his hands on William Regal again to turn the tide, making it think that, you know, Sheamus at that point made him think, they, uh, he was going to end up winning with bro kick. They did the promo there, and the, uh, after that, and then William Regal comes about, uh, or not William Regal, but Big Show comes about and attacks William Regal backstage, KOing him there, and basically putting the emphasis back on, you know, Big Show has the momentum. He has the he has the KO punch. He has the one thing that pretty much makes him an unstoppable force. So that will. That definitely leads well into the pay-per-view going into that match as well. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, mostly because I didn't think the segment was all that great. But um, I did not like the way they... Uh, I like the way that they initially handled the whole Jerry the King Lawler situation, him coming back out there. Good to see Jerry the King Lawler back on commentary. Good to see that as well. And I'm basically just going to say, I know everybody who was out there uh, did their part in what they were supposed to do. I'm not even going to say what uh, what they ended up doing in the actual uh, segment itself, but CM Punk does eventually come out 
interrupt and you know they have their promo back and forth and another act was done which I just found to be completely in in bad taste in my mind uh, if you watch the show you know what it, you know what it was if you haven't watched it um, uh, if you really want to go find a, a uh, YouTube clip or any kind of other clip uh, seeing the actual segment but I personally did not like that segment I found it in bad taste and in all honesty, everybody out there, I'm assuming were uh, um, it, like I'm assuming it was made to be where as long as Jerry was comfortable with it, they went with it, went with it. But it was what it was. I didn't think it was all that good. It did lead into you know Mick Foley becoming the special enforcer for the match at uh, at the end of the night for John Cena and uh, and CM Punk. But uh, that, that's basically all I have to say about this saying it was it just wasn't good in my mind. It just came off wrong in my mind at that point in time. Um, though it's another saying that ended up being really good in my mind was uh, the AJ, Vicky Guerrero, Dolph Ziggler, and uh, John Cena bit, where you know Vicky was out there presenting more evidence that they that John Cena and AJ had some kind of scandal, some kind of affair while uh, she was GM and uh, just the interaction between all four of them mostly just between the three with AJ, Vicky and Dolph because John didn't come out to right at the very end pretty much all he had to do was deliver a punch there because he walks out after everything had been done uh, you know in that angry type of look and everything and then eventually AJ slaps Dolph Ziggler and then gets his drill with a punch by John Cena uh, the segment was extremely well done and extremely well put together uh, that was uh, that was probably one of the better segments of the night um, the uh, now to this uh, one ma match that they made last week which was the Ryback and Brad Maddox match basically uh, in my mind, it did kind of fall under the uh, pointless area for the in the terms of being pointless for Brad Max. Why was he even there? They put a lot of build up into it, you know, throughout the whole show. They showed backstage segments with him, with him having a camera follow him around. But he pretty much went out there and got, you know, he got beat up pretty good. And in the t and like I said, I felt like it was just pointless for Brad Maddox uh, because uh, he, they kind of built it up as being a little bit more. You would think that they would find some kind of way to actually have him win the match, albeit not by pinfall or in, or by submission or anything, but by like a count out or a DQ or some kind of way. Um, cheap way of doing so, he would get a contract. But no, he pretty much got squashed and just served as another way of showing how dominant Ryback was. And that, that's not a bad thing in, in this case. It just, it ended up being pointless in one end, but it was, you know, it was showing Ryback's dominance on the other. So that that was basically the entire, uh, that entire segment and match. And yeah, uh, that will actually lead into the main event of the show, which was the uh, John Cena CM Punk match. Well, once again, this was one of the few good matches on the on the show. It was fun and entertaining to watch, um, and and basically also served a good purpose going into the pay per view. You had all three uh, all three guys out there. It looked like CM Punk was about to leave the match, where uh, Ryback comes back in. Cena drives him back in. They have a little back and forth again, eventually leading to Cena getting the victory with uh, the attitude adjustment. And it was a nice little stare down at the end there with having Cena and Ryback and they were staring over the WWE title, which eventually led into a nice little, you know, CM Punk sitting there right in the background with this worried look in his face while the, uh, his two challengers held on to the belt and kind of was doing a tug of war thing uh, with the title. So that was a very good way for me uh, in my mind that they uh, ended Raw in that, ca in that case. So... Yeah, uh, ba uh, basically, uh, basically saying, uh, I felt that Raw, yes, was lacking in match quality, but it was, it, it did a good job in getting things set up for the Survivor Series pay per view on Sunday. And that's pretty much all I have for, um, 
have for WWE Raw this week. I thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed.